Justin had our, our top question. Do left-handed players cause issues for the defense? Mm, really good. So yes and no. So we all know that the majority of players are right-handed. We all know that if we're putting everyone into a, a sped up dribble situation to their left hand, they're going to make poor decisions, make more turnovers, miss more shots. That's all good. But those things don't happen as much when it's a strong left-handed player. They'll still tend to be more explosive. They'll make a little bit better decisions. They'll still make more shots, especially contested at the rim. But here's what we found from most of our uh, lock left teams, especially the most effective lock left teams. When they play a really good lefty, one team was playing a, a lefty that already had scholarships to power five schools, um, conference player, et cetera, et cetera. And that left-hander got so frustrated because they could get to their left hand so easily and so often, they ended up playing one on five and taking really poor shots and making poor decisions. Whereas a lot of times a righty would be more reluctant to actually go and attack. They'd still keep trying to run the offense because that left-hander feels confident. It actually lowers the overall offensive efficiency of their team because they're just playing one on five, which is why we shrink the floor, which is why we stack up any race the rim on the weak side. So yeah, they get, they, they do attack um, a little bit more effectively, but their decision-making is still poor. And it, it really does what we're trying to do, which is not let the other team run their offense. Uh, so really good question. Uh, what would be our next one, Claire? We have a question about skip passes, baseline out of bounds, as well as five out offense. Perfect. So I'll, I'll give you a really high level, simple answer to those. In our lock left online course, we spend 15 to 20 minutes with diagrams, with practice progressions and how you'd actually practice all of those things. There's no way that we could get through the 15 plus hours of content in our lock left online course um, in this call. So those are all questions that have come up so often that we've created whole content around them. But here's one of our lock left teams that I think I, I want you guys to see what it can actually look like. I, ideally, we want to start the ball crossing the left-hand side of the court, but you're not going to always have that. So here's an example where, hey, we didn't get, we didn't start the ball left. They actually crossed the ball on the right-hand side of the floor. But what you can see they're doing a really good job of is they're doing a really good job of shrinking the floor. So we're forcing a left-hand dribble but there's not a straight line drive because the defender to the left of the ball is shrinking the floor, which then gets the ball to the left-hand side of the floor. That's a great example of shrinking the floor. Now you can see how we're guarding the ball. And when the ball does get to the left-hand side of the floor, this is what we call lock stance. Lock stance, the feet and the hips and the shoulders are parallel to that left sideline because we're not trying to guard the rim. We're trying to guard the right-hand side of the floor. We're locking the ball. We start it, we sped it, now we're locking the ball to the left-hand side of the floor. So pretty good job here as well, sitting in the gap. So you can also see one pass away to the right. You can see how they're, they're denying. They're not allowing a, a pass to the right. So now we've gotten the ball to the left corner. This is great. So we did a really nice job getting the ball to the left corner. Now we're going to keep that ball in that left corner. We're going to try to stack up that midline a little bit right here exactly what we want to do by shrinking the floor there and you'll also see that they weren't able to run any offense we were able to speed them up a little bit and i say we um because uh coach is doing a great job with, with how they're guarding this as well another really common one let me back this possession up for a second another really common one especially when a team gets used to this is we want the ball in there to go and drive right away and teams that have great composure and great coaching they can stay slow and we all know that that's not a lot of teams a lot of teams when we pressure and we're going to get them to go so in this situation we actually want this ball handler to be driving inside the arc as quickly as possible and the reason we do is because there's no space for him to drive inside the arc we want him to drive right into this chaos we don't want to allow him to stationary dribble and kind of periscope and pick apart the offense so that's why we've got to get the ball going left immediately and so that's why we're getting a lot of pressure again good job shrinking the floor now we will front a post a ball side post 100 of the time in the lock left front a ball side post that's because the defender fronting ball side post is our gap defender they're the one helping us shrink the floor. 
And you'll see that we have whoever's the lowest weak side defender, they're in the smile or where the charge circle will be there, right there for the lob. We'd like to see number 11 pinching down to just below the nail here. Um, that would be our that would be our ones that are going to be erasing the rim. So that's exactly what we're looking. And this is what we talked about. Well, what about a skip? What when the ball gets uh, on a baseline drift to the right-hand side of the floor? That's absolutely going to happen. We want to try to limit it as much as possible because when we're on the ball here on the left, his stance isn't really in a lock stance right now. He's too open to the rim. We actually want to keep him locking the ball in the corner and putting him deeper into the baseline. We don't want to give up this baseline drive. We want to lock it, okay? But it's still going to get out there. And when it does, we still want to do the same thing. We'll try to close him off and get a left-hand drive because we want this shot all day long. A driving, contested, left-hand, drifting, kind of mid-range floater. That's what we want. So if the ball does get to the right, it doesn't matter. On the ball, we're playing the exact same way every single time. Let me show you two more possessions, and we'll get to a couple more of your questions here. Let's back this one up. This is what it would look like on the ball. You see that we're, we're not necessarily in a press. We're not trying to turn the ball. We're just trying to influence the ball to the left-hand side of the floor. We're trying to speed it up a little bit if we can. But by sitting in the gap right here, we're giving this pass because we're trying to get the ball to the left-hand side of the floor. Teams don't tend to practice the left-hand side of the floor, but now it's there, we're in lock mode. We're locking the ball there, we're not allowing it back. We're in gap to the left, and you'll see here to the right, we're in deny. And teams get really good at switching any sort of exchanges or screen action on that weak side. Really nice job there. Now, the only thing that I would probably like to do a little bit different is I'd like our erase at the rim to stack up and form a little bit more of a wall. We would like to see this low defender at the rim deeper in the smile so that we can't give up that lob over top right there, right? Like a little bit deeper. I'd like to see this player a little bit higher below the nail, right? And I'd like to see our deny player maybe a little bit more so we're really forming a wall to really keep that ball on the left-hand side of the floor. As with most defenses, the more length and athleticism you have, the better your defense is going to be. And you can imagine that if you had a lot of length and athleticism, that wall would be really, really discouraging um, to any sort of a skip or swing pass right here. Really nice job here, which is really common, having a lot, a little dribble handoff or a little exchange on the left-hand side. Auto switch, auto switch, auto switch, right? We just Because, because again, just goes back to our principle. Ball always is dribbled left. Next to the ball, help shrink the floor. Don't let the ball right. Encourage it to go left, right? We just make decisions like this. And if you're two passes away, you want to make help us erase the rim, erase the midline, be strong at the midline. So they're able to keep that ball locked right there. As soon as you see number three, uh, who's in the gap right here, as soon as this player cuts away, he then will leave the gap and become our low wall position right there. Beautiful. This is exactly what we want. Okay, we want that type of a shot. What we don't want is what happens here um, is we don't want to actually leave this spot. If they want to shoot that contested shot, we're not going to leave the low wall position. That's where we need to go and erase the rebounder a little bit more because we get in trouble here, give up an offensive board. And who knows what happened on that one? We see a couple more possessions I'll let play and you can just kind of watch it uh, here. So again, you see, this isn't a press. There's not, you can jump out of it, but I wouldn't start jumping out of it. We just want to try to speed that ball up. Oh, really nice on the gap right here. Speed that ball up. We're trying to encourage that pass out to the left wing, left corner a little bit. But if we can get people to leave their feet going left, and that's why we're trying to speed the ball up, right? We start the ball left and then we speed the ball left because then we can cherry pick these passes. That's a really hard pass to make. And what all of our lock left teams have seen is their turnover rate, their steals go up um, with the lock left. So it helps them get out and transition a little bit more as well. So it's still weak and just keep that ball moving left on any screen, going to like a drop coverage, as you can see here. You see a drop coverage, which helps become that gap defender because anybody next to the ball just wants to help us shrink the floor, right? Our principles never change. How we guard any action fits into our principles, ball left, shrink the floor, erase the rim. We just keep it left. He's gotten a little trouble there because he got away from our principal. He didn't keep the ball being attacking and dribbled left. He gave him too much space when they went into that switch. We want the ball being dribbled. We don't want the, anyone to ever be able to shoot it. We don't want anyone to ever be able to pick up the ball, periscope, and run an offense.
Really nice job locking the ball on the left-hand side of the floor there. Notice that this, this team, a really good team, hasn't run an offense yet, right? And I, and I will say this, that the teams that are most successful against the lock left defense, that's a great shot for us. Not a great rebound, but a great shot for us. If we can get these type of contested kind of floater type shots to the left hand, we're winning. We're winning. And then we're going to get into our rebounding. Um, I will say, like I was mentioning before, the teams that tend to be the most successful um, against the lock left defense are the ones that just have a ton of freedom and they just go ball out. They just go hoop and play and do their thing. Um, the teams that have the most trouble with the lock left defense are the ones that are highly scripted and choreographed and are executing type teams. And so you'll kind of know, uh, and that's why, that's why if you're just uh, like a group two, it's like, hey, I want something to, a wrinkle to throw in in the postseason here. Um, it's a great time to throw it in, um, especially when the team's coming out of a timeout because it blows up scripted action. All right, Leaf asked about defensive rotations. Is there a high emphasis on defensive rotations or does it get figured out um, through the lock left? There's a very low emphasis on rotations in the lock left. And I'll tell you why. We don't want to rotate. Rotations are what take a lot of practice time where we say when this happens, then we do this. And a lot of coaches do defensive shell drill for that. We attempt to create these principles in lock left where there is very little help. The only person that's ever going to help guard the ball is going to be our low defender that's erasing the rim. That's it. And so they don't have to leave the smile or the charm circle. Their job is to only get vertical in the smile in the charge circle. So if we aren't doing a whole lot of rotations, because when we sit in the gap, we're just skirmishing in the gap, we're not actually helping, we're skirmishing and getting scramming back out, um, or we might just do a jump switch and a scram, there's no rotating. We are just trying to speed the ball up and get a shot attempt as quickly as possible. A lot of times teams that rotate, help and rotate, is they're trying to stop shot attempts, right? But we are not trying to stop shot attempts. We're trying to encourage our type of shot attempts, which are one, off the dribble, two, in isolation, not off of any sort of an action, and three, to the left hand. If we can do that, we don't need to rotate and take those away. We encourage them. We encourage them early in the shot clock. And that's why so many of our lock left teams are scoring 70, 80, 90 points per game because they're getting out in transition. They're also shortening the possessions um, for the opponent. And it's a way you can still keep a pretty short rotation. You know, a lot of times coaches are a little bit concerned about, you know, man, you know, I'd love, you know, to score more points, but we have a short bench and I don't want to exhaust my players. And this, this isn't like an all out press that can exhaust your players. This is just creating a decision box for an opponent early in the offensive shot clock where they're weak, dribbling left at speed with a lack of vision in situations that we've been in a lot. Great question, Leaf. We don't want to rotate. Lock left should eliminate most rotations. The greatest rotation is actually a rebounding rotation, you know, which you saw on these clips. I didn't cherry pick these clips. These clips are just like common situations. Um, there's a drive to the left hand and a shot attempt that's not a wide open layup, like a contested layup or floater. And so when that ball goes up on the glass, because we have someone erasing the rim, that weak side rebounder, especially if it's a weak side rebounder, that weak side rebounder needs to be erased. So we erase the rim. We also need to wedge out and bury that weak side rebounder out of bounds. So that's the rotation, to answer Lee's question. The, the rotation is not a defensive rotation. The rotation is a rebounding rotation is the furthest defender guarding that right wing, right corner player right here. As you see number four, take the type of shot that we want taken all day long, a floater from 12 feet with the left hand, right? When he takes that shot, we'll see that there was an attempted kind of box, but that needs to be happening sooner and it needs to be way stronger. We have to get this offensive rebounder wedged out he needs that knee right up under his butt and needs to be wedging 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 getting him behind the backboard so then we can close down and get the rebound that's re the rebounding rotation because when you see the lock left team's shot charts the majority of the shots that are being taken are from right here inside the arc and that's a win for us 
and they're off the dribble. And so the majority of the rebounds, as we know, are going to the opposite side. And so this wedge rebounding is key. All right, uh, Jason, another Lockless team, and uh, really excited to continue to work with you guys. You haven't been good at getting the ball reversed uh, as it's been getting reversed to the right as the offense moves and their tire who's playing um, one pass to the right of the ball. The deny vacates their area and the weak bears have to rotate up to deny. I wouldn't have them leave their space to the right of the ball. I would really work at switching because someone's filling that space. So even if it's like a pass cut fill situation, I would really work on them staying in that space because it's more important than they guard their player. It's more important that they help us lock the ball to the left-hand side of the floor. So what I'd probably do as far as a drill for that one, Jason, is I'd probably go, um, I would go a four on three drill, four offense, three defense. And I would have the offense, give the offense that advantage. I'd have the offense really trying to pass and cut and fill. And the defense really has to over communicate on that to be able to make sure that they are forming that, that deny and gap relationship to the ball. Um, and I'd probably play that um, until maybe a defensive team gets three stops in a row. And, you know, I think that's a perfect segue into what I think is probably the most valuable part of this training of this call are three ways to teach the lock left better.